Hello everyone. So I wanted to share with all of you my latest digital collection and that is the Tea Time Collage Collection. And so I printed it all out so you could see what it looks like. And then I thought I would do a few journal pages with it just to give all of you some project ideas of how you can use the kit. And yeah, this kit was just so much fun. <laughs> if you all have been with me for a while, you might have seen my first Tea Time digital collection that I launched. Oh, I think it, it's been probably four or five years now. It was probably one of the, I don't know, third, fourth collections that I ever did. <laughs> and oh my goodness, I, I do plan on revising that collection because when I did it way back then I didn't have a tablet or a pen I just had a mouse and a keyboard and I was trying to draw from the mouse or using my finger on the keypad and oh <laughs> just I don't even know how I did it back then I, I really don't but anyway um, as you can see if you look back at my first collections and then hopefully you'll notice the ones now are I, I would like to I mean I would like to think that they're much better quality I do a lot more original artwork when I was learning digital art I basically was just doing a lot of public domain images and collaging them together and as I progressed through the years, I now like to do more original works of art. So what I might do is take, for example, some public domain images and collage them in with some of my original artwork just to create a whole new piece of art. So, yeah. But I love the way that this collection turned out. I love whimsical. I love fantasy. I, I just, I love working in this genre. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like vintage and Victorian. I, I, I love it. I, li I like to switch back and forth, if you notice. So my next collection that I plan on doing is going to have more of a vintage theme. But actually, this one kind of had, I guess you could say it's got kind of a vintage whimsical feel to it because I did use some of the uh, vintage Alice in Wonderland images and text so it kind of has that feel to it anyway in this kit what I was showing is to start off with was the ephemera so you get five sheets total of ephemera and it has some journal cards and tickets with sentiments and some easy cuts on there and then you get five of the lined journal pages, five designer pages, five coordinating pages, five envelopes, and then I did five sheets in the eight and a half by 11 size because I know some of you like to create covers for your book and you might need it a little larger and so I went ahead and made that larger size available. It's also nice, as you'll see when I go into where I start building the journal pages and, and uh, working you know, on the project itself, you'll see how I use those eight and a half by 11 papers and cut them up to build my pages. So it's, they're also good for that. Okay, so now that we're in focus here, <laughs> what I'm going to be working out of is this spiral bound planner paper thing. Oh yes, let's get that all nice and clean. <laughs> I think I, there was like this big spot in the middle. Um, anyway, yeah, I got this when I was at the retreat with Gail. She had a little stash of items she didn't want, so I kyped this and I thought I'm going to use this and uh, thought that the idea I had in mind for building these journal pages I thought this would work perfect for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using one of my stamps you guys have seen me use this stamp 
a few times now and I did a coloring tutorial so I'm not going to go into great depth with you know how I color this all in but I thought I would just show a quick overview and I'm going to put some music on and let you all just kind of sit back and enjoy and then I'll be back to show you how I use this in creating a focal page for my journal pages and yeah I had way too much fun building these pages so I hope you guys enjoy the little coloring preview and uh, I'll be back <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to start by building my page. And so what you see here, the stamped image, the one that I colored, this one I did just a quick coloring because when I do my prototype pages, just to make sure I don't mess anything up, I'm going to save her till the very end. So that's why she looks a little different. So what I did is I started by cutting out the hat and some flowers and then I took the tea time tag there from one of the papers and fussy cut that out and I plan on creating a pocket at the top to put in the journal card and some of the sentiments and then down below I fussy cut those flowers and I want to create a pocket down there as well and then I'm going to take some of the diamond drap and just add a little bit of bling to the ribbon coming down from the stamped image and glue on the tea time tag. And I decided to use some gold trim first to create one pocket and then I'm going to place the flowers on top to create a second pocket. And I did print this on 110 pound white cardstock because I wanted it to be more durable. Usually the ephemera or anything I'm going to create a pocket with, I like it to have you know pretty good durability so I will print it on the heavier weight cardstock. And now I'm just marking where I want to punch out the holes so I can insert it into my spiral bound notebook. And this is a great way of you know if if you get to where you want to add something or take something out by doing this type of journal it allows you that flexibility with you know any sort of spiral bound spine so like if you wanted to create a planner hybrid journal this would be great for that because again you could take out some of the old calendars, put in a new one. If you wanted to change the theme, you could do that as well. And you'll still have your artwork, you know, your pages that you can take off from the spiral bound uh, section there. And then if you wanted to use it later, you have that option. So that's one thing I like about uh, using a spiral bound spine as opposed to having it stitched in. And then I just took and I glued some ribbon on the back of that thinking that I'll create a pocket on the back side of that page. Now I wanted to create a little more dimension to my page so I decided to use one of the Tim Holtz timepiece stencils and I'm taking the Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide and using that first and then I'm going to go in over that with Vintage Photo and Dusty Concord. Again, just to give it a little more dimension. Okay, so I have to tell you all that this is the second time that I had to do this video. <laughs> I had the first one all done. Of course, it was a little longer. It was like 15 minutes longer. Not sure how that happened, but my computer had to run update and then out of the blue, like halfway through the update, it just, my computer shut down, just out of the blue, turned off. And because of that, it ended up, I guess, corrupting files. Nothing was working. So I had to call Microsoft and we're going through things. And then all of a sudden the keyboard stopped working and then the mouse wouldn't work and then my pen wouldn't work and I just thought it was because of the computer. Anyway, I had to end up downloading something and my internet is really slow, which was not helping anything. It took like eight hours to download this file that I had to download. Finally got it, plugged it into the computer like I was supposed to and got everything running again. But then when I went to do the keyboard, my computer wasn't picking it up. So then I found out that the batteries were dead in it. But then I was working off my mouse and that seemed to be working. I got it connected and then it died. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. The batteries, 
and the batteries were dead and it wouldn't turn on nothing. So the batteries went dead in the keyboard, batteries went dead in the mouse, and then I went to use the Amazon Fire Stick, and guess what? Yeah, I'm not joking. The batteries were dead in my Fire Stick. It's crazy. So it's 11, like 11, 11.30 at night. I had to run to the store, woke my husband up to run to the store and get AAA batteries. <laughs> That <laughs> just is crazy. I have this weird thing. I'm telling you, we go through tons of light bulbs, and I can't even tell you all the computer issues I have. I think that people don't believe me sometimes when I'm like, yeah, my computer's not working. I'm having problems with this. Oh, again, it's like crazy. I'm, I don't know, credit card machines? Weird. It's just weird. Anyway, I had to say that. It, it was just... It's crazy so yeah this is my second time doing this video but I'm going to get this done so help me I'm going to yes all right so what you see me doing now is I'm taking my gold metallic pen and just hitting some areas because I want that metallic shimmer and so I'm taking and applying it to the edge of one of the pieces from the ephemera uh, page and then I also took a black liner pen and went around parts of the stencil and then went over with the gold metallic pen just to kind of soften some of my black lines there and now I'm taking that piece of ephemera and gluing that to the back side of my page and I'm also taking some paper clips and gluing those down onto some of those journal cards and the tickets. I don't know if you guys can hear my stomach grumbling in the background. <laughs> I, I'm not hungry. I had chicken pot pie from Costco and I don't know if you guys have ever tried the chicken pot pie from Costco but it is so good and I totally stuffed myself on it and either my stomach is really mad at me or it's really happy with me <laughs> I'm not sure but it's grumbling like crazy so yeah if you guys can hear that I'm, I'm sorry for my belly <laughs> okay so I kind of skipped over to this other side I wanted to show really quick I took some of these stickers I got them at Tuesday morning and I liked them because they remind me of the typewriter keys and so I spelt Alice and I'm placing that on that square of decorative cardstock and I'm going to create a pocket on the back side of the page there and then I took my little Mad Hatter piece of ephemera there and I thought he would look really cute with her so I plan on using him on the page somehow, some way, still trying to figure out how I want to build my page. And I thought he would actually look cute, this Mad Hatter character would look cute coming out of the hat kind of, and then I glue down the laugh ticket onto him and then I added a little butterfly button just for a little embellishment and then the whimsy sentiment that you see there I just right now it's laying on the page I don't have it all glued down and I'll come back to that a little later so what I'm doing now is I took a large tag and I'm going to take my Spellbinders 3D embossing folder and emboss my tag I do have four or five of this uh, embossing folder in stock. They did discontinue it. I loved it. It gave me this inspiration to do a Queen of Hearts tag because it had the hearts with the wings and so that's what gave me the idea to again create a Queen of Hearts tag. So I'm going to start by going over it with some of the Broken China Distress Oxide and then I take, I believe it's the fired brick distress oxide and go over the hearts and little areas with that shade and, and even on the edges a little bit. And then I take some Pentart metallic gold wax paste 
and hit sections of the heart and other areas of the tag just to bring in some of that antique gold color. And if you can't find the Pentart gold wax that I'm using, I believe uh, Prima has a color similar. I'll have to check and see if I can list that in the description below when I get the video done, if I ever get this video done. <laughs> I feel like I've been working on it forever. <laughs> All right. And then I decided to take some black soot, but it turned out being navy gray because I still had the broken china color on my dauber there. So when I dipped it into the black soot, it created this navy blue shade, which I actually ended up liking. And then the dauber that you see me using there, I believe my mom, if I understood her correctly, my dad, I think he was the one who came up, or she thinks it was my dad who came up with the idea of taking a makeup sponge and putting it over a wine cork which is just genius, right? And it works so good. And you can look forward to like drinking wine so you can have a wine cork that you can repurpose and use for a dauber. <laughs> oh yeah. Always try to justify having a glass of wine. So now I'm taking a marker and just wanted to bring in more of a pinkish red tone and brighten it up a little bit. And I found that this was just a little too bright, so I go over it with a darker kind of a wine color and just wanted that heart to pop a little more, make it a little more vibrant. And then I take some of the metallic gold and go over it just to blend it all in. But it's these little details, these fine details that you see me doing where, you know, I'm adding in the heart with the marker or the metallic gold pen, adding some of that color to the edges or uh, just the stenciling and, and using other colors, adding in other colors. It's those finer details that, and, and the layers that really start to bring your page to life. And sometimes it's just the littlest thing. You know, like when you see me put the white dot in the pupil of the eye, it's so, you know, it's such a little thing. It's this little detail, but it's like everything. It just brings the eyes to life. And that's kind of the same thing, like these little details and all these layers that you do to your pages, it is what brings your page to life. So now I'm just taking some of the Distress Oxide in the black soot and going around some of those edges and then I'm going to glue her down onto my tag and cut off the excess and I will now have my Queen of Hearts tag, that embossing on the tag, it just makes it, I love it. And again, I think I have four or five of the embossing folders in stock. And so, you know, if you don't see them on the site, just send me an email and I can send you an invoice. And, you know, if you're interested in getting one, just let me know. There's a nice contact form on my new site. I had to do a whole new website <laughs> because, you know, it's, I have all these weird problems with my computer. Um, that's a whole nother story of how that happened. Anyway, I have a new site and hopefully you guys will find it easier to navigate through and I'm still working on it. So there's parts that I don't have done like the about us section, you know, things like that. It's not com completely done, but it's functional. I mean, it shows all the products that are available Everything's loaded on, on that end as far as products and being able to purchase them. It's just those little finer details that I don't have done yet, like blog information or the About Me page, things like that. 
but there is again there's a contact form at the bottom so you guys if you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to carry that I'm not carrying just yeah let me know okay so what you see me working on now is I took an envelope and I think I got these envelopes at Hobby Lobby I liked them because it had the black and white stripe and the inside has this gold foil which worked perfectly for the color scheme that I was using and just this theme in general and so I took the remaining uh, pieces from my page where I cut out the queen and I thought it would look really neat to take the text there where it says the queen of hearts and have that sticking up behind her on the envelope and so now I'm just trying to take the pieces that I had left over from that page and put them on my envelope so everything looks cohesive and I'm doing that by I added that little bit of decorative tape on the side and I'm adding a little more at the bottom used my distress oxide to kind of soften some of the edges of my paper that I glued on and then I had this one other big piece of my paper left over and I'm going to use that in the center so I just cut it down to make it to where it would fit in the center there now I still have that one bottom left corner that needs to have something placed over it so I decided to use some of this metallic gold trim and you see it on the other page there I'm going to use that same trim to cover up that one little section there and I also use some of the washi tape that has the gold foil stars. I love this washi tape. They don't carry it anymore. I got it at Hobby Lobby. I love it. When I found out that they were not going to carry it anymore, I think I bought like three rolls of it because <laughs> I use it a lot. So that's where I took that little piece of trim to cover up that one area there and just kind of seeing if I want to put anything else underneath because I have that one little edge there where the paper just wasn't quite white enough so I decided to take a little more of the gold trim just to put it over that section there it was really kind of driving me nuts and I wanted to again make it so everything looked cohesive and then I decided to put another piece of that trim up at the top just to kind of bring it all together. And so, yeah, with little bits of trim, washi tape, distress the edges, you have a nice decorative envelope to use in your journal. I did fussy cut out one of the hearts and I plan on using that in the center of the em envelope. I just thought that, I don't know, it needed something more. <laughs> I think that with a lot of my pages, if you don't notice, I'm always thinking it just needs a little something more. And I'm never quite sure when it's done. But I did hear from an artist, a well-known artist, I don't remember who it is, but you know, like one of those master artists. And they said that when you get to a point of where you can't, like if you go to add something and you can't really tell that it's adding that much more to your page, or to your you know painting then you're probably done so I always try to keep that in mind so now I'm just gluing everything down and I think I'm just about done with this envelope nope I still am adding more oh I know I took the text I think it says the Queen just that little bit and put it up above and then I'm taking some of that black and white stripe there and I'm going to add it to sections of the envelope as well I just I wanted to tie in more of that black and white even more than just 
what I did with the washi tape. I like eye candy. I wanted it to have the eye candy effect. That's what I'm going for here. <laughs> okay, and I did, if you look, I did add in a little bit of the gold diamond drop there on the lower left section. And then I'm just, I added another little heart and now I'm just seeing what other things I might want to add. I don't think I end up using this hat, if I remember. And then I just add a little piece of trim to the top of the tag and I'm going to end up stapling that on there. And then I fussy cut out the ephemera that says Wonderland. And I'm going to use that to hold everything down on the page, which I will show here in a little bit. But I'm going back to the other side of my page here. And I still wanted it to have more texture, more dimension. So I was looking through my stash of goodies and I came across this architecture's clock and it ended up working perfectly around the stencil. But if you don't have this, you could use the Tim Holtz Big Dies uh, die and just take some, you know, charcoal gray paper and you could use, you know, a die cut or if you have a Cricut or a brother scan and cut, something like that, you could do that to create a similar look that I'm doing here with these architectures because I don't know if they're still available. I'm not sure. I'll have to find out. I'll try to find out. I'll try to remember to find out. <laughs> it's going on like one o'clock in the morning. The last video I did, I think I was up until four in the morning. Oh my gosh. I was like half dead when I did that video. Maybe it's a good thing that my computer died so so, you know, hopefully this one, I sound a little more alive. <laughs> and if you notice, uh, Alice, I changed her up again. This one I was going to use and then I applied some matte medium over her to protect her and it smudged everything. I don't know if you can tell, but it created a mess on her face. So that's how I ended up doing the one that I showed in the beginning, and I end up using her in the very end. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the other page, and now I'm going to start putting everything together. So I start by using this piece of decorative cardstock. I chose a polka dotted white and pink. And then I'm just, again, putting the marks on the page where I want to punch my holes. And then I will insert it into my spiral bound notebook. I did want to add a little something to that edge. So I used one of my Martha Stewart punches to create a nice decorative edge there. And you could use any punch or die that you might have to do this. And then I distressed the edges in the broken china. And now I'm going to go in, because I want my pages to stagger, or my flaps to stagger, you'll see where I go and I'm going to cut another piece of decorative cardstock and adhere it to the left side of my damask patterned paper there because I need it wider. I want it to stick out and stagger from my first layer there. And I chose this kind of ledger-like paper. The main thing is I was just trying to keep in with my color scheme of the golds, pinks, black and white, and so that's why I selected that paper. And I like different patterns. You know, so I have polka dots and stripes and this damask pattern. So I don't have anything too matchy-matchy. I really like, you know, to have those different patterns and colors happening on my page. 
because I think that it really gives the eye a lot to look at. Again, it creates that interest to your page. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing here with the tabbed folder because I want it to stagger over that damask patterned flap and to do that I had to add that extra piece there so I chose that green leafy patterned paper and glued it down onto my tabbed folder and now I'm taking one of the tea time digital papers that I printed out and just marking the page to cut holes in that And you can see these different layers and you know how everything's staggered. It just gives it life. And this is where I decided to take uh, one of the hearts. I think it's from one of the ephemera pieces and I fussy cut that out and I decided to glue that over that stamped crown. I was not liking the stamped crown. <laughs> It just wasn't doing it for me. So I decided to go with that extra heart there. And this is where I staple down that piece of trim in the tag. And as you can see, things are really starting to come to life. All those beautiful staggered layers and different colored patterns and colors and textures. It's the one thing I absolutely love in my journal pages and so I hope this is where you know I can show you or you'll you'll learn from this video a way of doing that you know and how you create those flaps and how you create those different layers I always like to hear your comments it just you know if you ever learn something new or if it's helping it's just uh, I love reading them because I love to share these pages with all of you and I don't know just knowing that if it's helping inspire you all to create or motivating you to create that's what makes it rewarding so it, it just creates this sense of like I'm not doing it all by myself. I have all of you that I can do these projects with and share them with. So yeah, when you leave me comments, it's a way of responding back that I'm not doing this just for myself. <laughs> so I love all your comments. And again, I read them all. I don't have time to reply to all of them, but I do read them and they mean everything. They really do. Okay, so you saw where I took that Wonderland piece and I punched some holes on the side there and then I just attached everything using a Prima paper clip and I do have packages of these. Again, I hope to get them up on the site and I'll have those links showing where you can get them in the description below. And now I'm just starting to put everything, those final pieces together. So I have the paper clips on the back of the Mad Hatter and those uh, tickets down below. I decided to glue the one ticket onto the Mad Hatter. And I'm just adding in these final touches. I did decide to go ahead and continue on further with this. I was going to end it and do a part two, but I didn't think I had enough content to do a part two, so I just went ahead and made it a little bit of a longer video, and I'm going to show how I completed some parts of, you know, like the other side of the tag and some of the other flaps. So I decided to use one of the journal cards, and I took a file folder, and I'm going to create a pocket with this file folder and place it on the back side of my tag. Because I used this manila tag, it's what drew me to use the file folder because they were both the same color and I wanted it to kind of look like it was one piece. 
And then I found these stamps at Tuesday morning, and I think they might still have some available. It's, they're these Sheena stamps, but they reminded me so much of Tim Burton, and I thought, oh my God, this is perfect for Alice in Wonderland. So I had to grab it. And I just, I plan on stamping more of those into this, uh, but for the video, it was going quite long, like it's almost an hour long. <laughs> I just did the one stamp there for now. It just worked perfectly for this project. I think the whole stamp set was only, I don't know, two, three dollars at the most. It was well worth it. I love Tim Burton. I love his quirky, kind of whimsical, and some sometimes a little bit dark, but uh, I just think he is an amazing artist. I love his stuff. And then I'm taking one of the sentiments there and I'm gluing it down on the bottom. And I'm taking more of this heart washi tape, one of my favorites, all time favorite washi tapes. <laughs> and I'm just going to put some of that above just to kind of add, you know, like I always say, just add that little something something. And so yeah, I think that's good. And then I'm going to work on this other flap and I decided to take these heart tags. I got them at Joann's a while ago, so I don't know if they still have them, but you could take a die, you know, in the shape of a heart again, or your Cricut or whatever you might have, a punch, a heart punch, and create the same look. And I'm going to take another heart in a different color and adhere it to the back to create this pocket. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I don't normally talk this long. <laughs> I just need to get through the next 10 minutes. <laughs> That's all that I have left to go here. Oh, it's coming towards the end. Uh, so yeah, I created a pocket there. I thought it would look neat to have the Cheshire journal card there sticking up from the page. And then I decided to go with just a little rhinestone in that um, hole where you put string in that heart tag. And then I had these heart rhinestones I got from the dollar store and I put one of those. Oh my God, I can't even keep up here. <laughs> Going too fast. <laughs> anyway, you can see I put one of those in one of the hearts on the envelope. And here's where I put that rhinestone. I thought I might end up taking the rhinestone off and actually putting a piece of string through there and tying a little bow. I think that might actually look cuter. I don't know. We'll see. And then I took another one of the journal cards and cut her out and I'm working on this other side of that tabbed folder and I'm going to create a pocket with some of the trim and I'm going to create a little file folder pocket with that whimsy and the Alice sentiment there. And then I fussy cut out that clock section from one of the pages and cut out the rabbit journal card. And I have this tag. Again, I got it at Joann's. And so I'm just adding these little bits of, you know, scraps of trim and some of the pieces from some of the papers and journal cards and then I had these uh, notes uh, no I mean these planner pages it says notes <laughs> and I placed that behind the Cheshire journal card there I'm kind of just figuring out how I want to build everything I loved the rabbit in there and I might actually put him back but because I create a pocket, see, I can change things out as I like. And that's one thing I love about uh, journal pages too, is creating pockets. So you can add things, you could, you could 
change things out if you want to um, as opposed to just gluing things down on your page. And it's also a way to create more layers on your page as well. How you can build up your pages is through the use of pockets and the flaps. And so I'm just taking my little file folder pocket here and I'm going to place that on the top of that trim. So again, I'm going to be creating a double pocket, the one with the trim and then the one with the file folder piece there. I love adding in trim. It just, I think it just softens the page. And well, I have this thing with trim. I don't know. I hoard trim. I hoard paper. I hoard stamps. I hoard art supplies. <laughs> I have to start using some of this stuff up, you know? I have, to, I have all these plans, you know, I buy this trim and it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't need as much trim as I have. So I do plan on doing some kits to try to get rid of my stash of trim. I don't need all that trim. I don't think I could use it in a lifetime. I have so much trim. I mean, I have bins and bins and bins full of trim. Beautiful trims. And then I have some precious trims, like very old trims. And I plan on doing some scans of those and offering those as digitals here in the near future. Oh, they're just beautiful. They're these really old, like from late 1800s, early 1900s from Europe. Beautiful. Just crocheted lace, all these different trims. I can't wait. I can't wait to get them all scanned and be able to share them with you. I almost hate to use them. I mean, I paid a pretty penny for them. Like, I paid a couple hundred bucks for I don't know how many yards, but it was pricey. You know, I, I just thought it was going to be well worth it because they were so beautiful and I planned on scanning them and then selling the digitals and then, you know, having it so I can share that with all of you that way. Yeah, so look for that in the near future. Okay, so I'm taking those clocks, that clock border there, and I'm applying that to a piece of that file folder just again because I wanted to make it more durable since it was going to be a pocket. And I thought that the, the Mad Hatter hat would look really cute on top and just kind of finish that top section there. So that's what I plan on doing there. I did take the corner of that rabbit journal card and just glued the top left corner and then I glued the back bottom right corner to create kind of a pocket belly band there. And then, you know, later on if I wanted to add in other things, I have that side pocket there that I can use and it just allows me to add more in that space there. There's times when I just talk and I feel like I'm just, you know, my brain is asleep, but like my mouth just keeps going. <laughs> I just, yeah, just saying whatever, whatever comes to mind. <laughs> oh. And so adding in a little bit of trim, again, just adding in those little last details. And then I'm going to paper clip those planner pages into that, that back section there. I might build it up more later on. I might not. I was going to plan on using this for myself, but I actually might give it away with the other one, which I did want to mention. 
I have not forgotten. I am going to be um, doing the part two of the Jane series that I started, and I am going to do a binding, how to do a, the binding uh, for that first journal series, and then I will give that journal away. I haven't forgotten. I'm sure some of you are probably wondering. I just wanted to get this video done first because I did just release this collection and I wanted it to um, I wanted to be able to show a project idea with the collection. So here you can see where I fussy cut out the Alice that you saw me color and I glued her over the other previous Alice. This is the the I don't know the new and improved Alice. <laughs> she got a facelift <laughs> and, and it's wearing a little more makeup yeah and then I'm just taking little pieces I cut some black ribbon so it wasn't so wide little pieces of it I thought that would look you know again just give it more dimension and more textures and kind of give her that more mad hatter type hair look is kind of what I was going for you like my uh, my proper English there <laughs> my more like yeah <laughs> oh it's almost two in the morning so yeah I think uh, thank goodness there's just a few more minutes left <laughs> <laughs> this see this is where I think music would sound so much better but I get a lot of comments where you a lot of you say you actually like listening to me I don't know <laughs> I mean, are you sure I think the music would sound way better <laughs> okay yep we're getting to the last parts here Alrighty, this is it. We're all done. Woohoo! So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I covered a lot from coloring the stamp to building flaps to layering to adding in these little embellishment paper clip things and yeah, just it was hopefully, you know, you found it like useful. <laughs> <laughs> really don't know oh what to say <laughs> like I'm kind of out of words I just yeah I hope you enjoyed the video I do hope that you're getting some inspiration to create your own journal um, you know it doesn't have to be Alice in Wonderland it could be a different theme you could do the Jane Austen theme using the, the same layout and technique that I showed you in this video but yeah I hope you guys all enjoyed it uh, if you did as always please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet and you want me to continue to do more videos please subscribe and oh yeah don't forget to um, leave me comments let me know let me know if you're liking these types of tutorials or if there's a different sort of tutorial you'd like to see me do so we'll catch you all in the next video thank you so much for watching